Next part of life that we want to discuss after the prokaryotes are the more advanced and more developed eukaryotes. This is the next part of life that came after the prokaryotes. Eukaryotes, this prefix eu means true, and we can consider these the true cells. True cells that you're quite familiar with because you yourself are consistent or are full of eukaryotic cells. A good way to understand the eukaryotes is by understanding this uh, process that occurred with them called the serial uh, called serial endosymbiosis. Symbiosis. Serial endosymbiosis is a process that basically tells us how eukaryotes originated and this is all about the origin of life once again so we can write this down as how eukaryotes, I'm just going to write EU, arose from who? Prokaryotes, of course. And so this is basically the reason that we have as eukaryotic cells, if you don't know already, I'm going to write this down on the side, um, reason for uh, things like mitochondria within our cells. This is just a side note, and things like plastids as well within plants. So this is the reason we have those within us, and we can explain the eukaryotic origins of life by looking at the serial endosymbiotic theory. So, what happened in this process, let's say? Basically, it's very simple. A smaller prokaryote, imagine a smaller prokaryote, was ingested by a bigger prokaryote. Simple as that. That's where the basis of this theory is. But where it gets interesting is that this ingestion, notice how I use this word ingestion, not digestion. What happened to the digest then? The smaller prokaryote actually survived digestion. It didn't die within the bigger prokaryote. So what happened? Why did this happen? Basically, this smaller prokaryote evolved um, with the bigger prokaryote into a mutually beneficial relationship. So they both evolved a mutually beneficial relationship with each other. So this led to the idea or the belief that eventually the endosymbiont couldn't live alone and the endosymbiont is just the guy who got swallowed by the bigger prokaryote. So the endosymbiont eventually couldn't live alone at all. Couldn't live alone. And in addition, that bigger prokaryote, which is now considered the host cell, let's say, the host actually needed the endosymbiont to live. So I'm just going to write the endo to live. They developed a relationship that was so strong and tight that life itself depended on them being together. And so this arose and gave us the possibility for two different things. This idea of a mitochondria now can be understood in much greater detail and also the idea of a chloroplast. Both of these things arose because of this endosymbiotic theory. The mitochondria is something that helped the bigger, um, let's say, anaerobe. Helped bigger anaerobe. Because the anaerobe, if you remember, was the thing that ate other things, using those other things for energy in a process known as fermentation. It basically helped the bigger anaerobe to stop fermenting and said, you know what, you as a bigger anaerobe bacteria can now um, uh, use, help the bigger anaerobe use aerobic respiration because you just ingested something that used aerobic respiration and I'm going to help you use it to a much greater extent because I know as a mitochondria, as a former aerobe, that before you ingested me, I was able to very nicely use oxygen. I'm going to teach that to you. And this is what happened. The mitochondria gave us this ability to use aerobic respiration. The chloroplast 
contrastingly or similarly actually let's say it actually um, helped the bigger heterotrophic bacteria helped bigger let's say heterotroph use more so autotrophic ability it helped the bigger heterotroph use photosynthesis it said you know what I understand you like to go out and get your own food but let me show you this cool trick where I take the sunlight's energy and convert it into food and use it to break down the food that we have and this was known as photosynthesis this was specifically the cyanobacteria that did this that helped out the larger um, heterotrophic bacteria cyanobacteria right here so this is the idea of how eukaryotes developed a smaller prokaryote ingested a bigger prokaryote it survived digestion what did that happen it created a very mutually beneficial relationship so much so that each of the two relied on each other for life itself this is the whole origin of eukaryotes eukaryotes originated from this process and we actually have some very strong evidence to make sure that this process this theory is is definitely understood very clearly and our pro our evidence in and of itself is just looking at mitochondria themselves and then looking at chloroplasts themselves this are both physical pieces of evidence how so mitochondria possess a double membrane it's kinda weird right to think that something within you has a membrane within itself kinda tells you that it once must have lived alone on its own Mitochondria also, just like chloroplasts, are the right size. What do I mean by the right size? They actually are the same exact size as an anaerobic bacteria would be. Very interesting, right? In addition, both of these guys use similar enzymes. Similar, ENZ will stand for enzymes, um, as other bacteria do. They have very bacteria-like enzymes, other bacteria, BAC. They also both have their own DNA. If that doesn't tell you that they once lived alone, I don't know what will. Their own DNA, and more so, their own DNA is it's actually circular. It's kind of weird. We have double helical DNA. They have circular DNA. Guess who also has circular DNA? Just like the bacteria. So that tells you that they must have lived alone as well. In addition, mitochondria and chloroplasts, they have their own ribosomes, independent of our ribosomes and our rest of our cells. So these own ribosomes tell us even more. And also, mitochondria and chloroplasts have been known to undergo something known as binary fission, something, a way that bacteria um, replicate themselves. So overall, we now see the origins of eukaryotes. The serial endosymbiosis, this process, allowed us to figure out the prokaryotic origins of eukaryotes. And now we understand where these true cells came from.